thank you to all the viewers who relentlessly asked for Breda APX A1 Compact. Here it is. We're at the range. We have our C-Zone target at about 20 yards away. Sorry about the crazy lighting. We're in the Pacific Northwest. We get the sun at wicked angles when it comes out. <laughs> so that's the way things are gonna be. We have 10 rounds of New Republic 115 grain FMJ for this first shots. Have not sh fired this gun at all before. Gotta say loading the mags, not super pleasant when they're brand new. Maybe they'll break in throughout the day. We'll keep you updated on that. But uh, yeah, it was, it was a good thing there was a mag loader there, but the mag loader also frustrated the follower and we ended up with a complex load. More on that later. 10 rounds of basic 115 grain at 20 yards. Thank you, sunlight on that fiber optic sight. Hitting a bit low. That's a very comfortable shooter. Now, New Republic is on the softer spectrum of ammo. Those of you who have seen our uh, range ammo test know that, but that abnormally comfortable for a compact firearm. That's, that's all I'm gonna say for now. Let's see how Tia does. So I'm back from measuring what seemed to be a little bit more than 20. It's closer to 30. Um, yeah, it's way up there. Ah. <laughs> we can still and hit I'm it. I'm going to try my 10 rounds. I love the way this feels in the hand already. Yeah. Yep. I'll shoot that all day long. Isn't that That's comfy? That's awesome. And that is... Know, yes. Now that you've called me out on the distance thing, the uh, delay between shot and impact should have told me that's that's farther <laughs> that was kind of my giveaway from behind the camera and i just kind of looked down there i'm like wait a minute <laughs> and this is what i get for watching too much youtube when everyone says oh 50 yards and they're shooting <laughs> the full-size steel and you hear the ding like the same time as the shot like ah. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be a fun review i'm excited well next we have full mag plus one to see how it runs fully stuffed same ammunition same target same distance same distance which is <laughs> Over 30 yards, as we now know. Full magazine plus one. We do this test to see how the gun runs fully stuffed. Some magazines don't like it. Some guns don't like it. That's what I was thinking. That mag was hard to load all the way. Yeah, it, I mean, it does it. It's getting oh, easier. Yeah, I hear that. Yeah, I had to really shove the first time. It does so take these a mags, when we were loading them the very first time, um, they're very stiff, brand new. I do feel the second time I the way that it's getting easier. All right. So 16 rounds on tap. Let's see how the gun runs. Well done. Pretty good. And the gun... It shifted on me a couple times, and as I found my grip, it just locked in. I don't notice, I didn't notice when shooting it, and I didn't notice in your hand a lot of nose flip at all. It's very well balanced. Yeah, I, I think that uh, tri-coil spring in there that I pointed out on the tabletop uh, is definitely making a difference. Comfy. So now let's see what it eats. Pardon the shadow as the big orange ball has come out in Oregon, but it's what's for dinner time. As we move past these, you see today we're going from 100 grain up to 158 grain, all with different bullet profiles, case materials, overall lengths, etc., etc. The point of what's for dinner is to see what the gun will eat. We're looking to see if it's a feed from slide lock, cycle another round of the same type, and lock open on empty. If you're curious about trying any of these loads in your own gun, check the pinned comment, the li link to gbgunsdepot.com, where in that article, we link to our sources for this stuff. For circle number one, one of these critical defense, this is 100 grain ammunition. It's 
never been my favorite. You got it stacked in there once you figured it out though. Yeah. For circle two, we have S and B. Uh, this is also a hundred green. Is, uh, that would not be my first choice. That's very snappy. Circle number three is 110 grain. This is Koenig. Yeah, with that last demo, I'm glad it has a spring in it. Nice. Trying to let my eyes catch up with my new prescription. <laughs> <laughs> this circle number four is the six hour elite defense. This is 115 green. That is a that was sharp. Circle number five is the Igman. This is also 115 grain. Nice. I like that one best so far. <laughs> Circle six, Federal HST 124 grains. Snappy, but still comfortable. I don't know if the camera is showing it, but uh, definitely rocking the gun, but not in a painful way, if that makes sense. No smell notes on that. It's pretty. I'll smell uh, it, but I can't identify it. Yeah. <laughs> Circle six, Remington HTP, high, uh, high terminal performance, jacketed hollow point. That is a 147 grain, or seven. Very broad front sight on this. These are definitely softer. Like a kitten compared to that last round. Yeah, a lot uh, more comfortable. So let's shake things up. And now we've got the HST, uh, Protect and Defend Pact. That's a 147 grain uh, Syntec that is matched to the 147 grain HST. So we'll start with the Syntec. These tend to be punchier. These are also 147 grain. Yes. Yep, knock my thumb right off the rest. Nice smell though, a little cinnamon. I can feel the slide bottom out. There was a little bit of shock load at the end there, um, but it was comfortable. This gun is just comfy. I don't know if it's that kind of rubberized back strap absorbing some, or if it's that tri spring doing its thing. I don't care. I like it. <laughs> now the 147 grain HSTs, these can be unpleasant. So this is the defensive part yeah. of that box? Yeah. This is the actual... Oh yeah, snappy. But Very accurate. Printed pretty darn nice. And our heaviest load is the PPU 158 grain. A subsonic load, usually pretty soft. No issues cycling any of these loads. Fairly comfortable to shoot through all of it. Even when there was more recoil, it wasn't uh, beaten on me like some guns do. Now we'll head over to the spinner for sights and trigger control.
That is our six inch Titan Great Outdoors spinner target, recently enhanced thanks to my dad. We are back 13 to 15 ish yards away with eight rounds of that new Republic ammo. It is soft ammo and this is just a 3.7 inch barrel. So we're not gonna have a ton of muzzle energy, but we use this target to judge sights and trigger control, small target at distance, as you hit it, it moves. The better you hit it, the faster it moves, the more important timing a well-placed shot becomes. <laughs> Tia hates it. Let's see how she does. Hate it. It's like you're going a little low. I don't know how though, and it's frustrating me, which affects Yeah, I don't have any idea what my issue could have been there because I had red front sight on red target, equal light between from the back, going away. Maybe I'm pulling a little bit too late on that swing. Um, you wouldn't think so, given the rate of velocity on ammunition. Like, it should get there when I am ready, but uh, yeah. I, this is not my favorite game to play. <laughs> um, it, was trigger timing difficult for you? Did it feel like you weren't able to shoot when you wanted to? It is a little bit heavy of a trigger. I will say that. Um, it, it doesn't, I would have to try that again, but maybe it doesn't stage like I'm used to. Maybe I need to give it more of just a pull through. Um, I did notice that I was anticipating a lot, which I tend to do when I am nervous or uncomfortable. Um, like shooting the spinner. My ability to perform. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, and that always frustrates me and affects my shooting. Um, so, what? No, I don't want to do it again. But thanks for the offer. That's very kind. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> what was different that time? Less anticipation, um, more aggressive trigger pull. Um, and my IDGAF was gone. <laughs> <laughs> um, folks, Tia didn't know that I was gonna film that. I just said, why don't you give it another try and hand it her my mag. Obviously, this shows a little bit can be just learning the gun. And also, it's a little tough to uh, shoot at a six inch target from 13 yards with the world watching. Yeah, and I mean, you know, I, I'm really good at making excuses for myself, but I do have a new prescription. I haven't been to the range in some time. This isn't my favorite thing to do. It challenges me every time. Um, so I'm all about it. But looking at that group, your shot placement there, very consistent. Your I have potential. Your sight picture was there, your trigger was there. Yeah. All right, so Tia just went and loaded a mag of unknown quantity <laughs> because since I was so generous and encouraged her to try again, I have an unknown amount. But that's not the point of this. The point is sights and trigger control. The sun has gone away, so that fiber optic is now brighter than the target. Oh, see, I wasn't going to put that last one in there and you needed it. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so this isn't easy, especially with a shorter barrel, shorter sight radius. The front sight post is broad, um, broader than most fiber optics. That is great for defensive use, getting on there, screaming in your face, hey, I'm here, front sight. 
but it can make fine aiming a little tough. With the blacked out rear, it's still made for a great sight picture, so it was very easy for me to aim. But the first few rounds there, my timing was off because of trigger. Not that the trigger was bad or unpredictable, but as I was starting to get frustrated with myself, I remembered Tia's own lesson and just pull through it. Uh, I think that's what this trigger is best for, which is a current trending way of teaching at schools. Staging triggers is not cool anymore. Now it's just pull through. And I think pull through fits better with defensive use to begin with. So did that trigger make this a little more challenging? Yes. But is this trigger more appropriate for defensive use for, oh, say, I don't know, a compact gun like this? Yes. So good job, Beretta. Quality trigger, great sights. With time and more training and me getting out of my staging habits, that would be very good. <laughs> Five rounds from seven yards. What are we shooting? Uh, this is the New Republic 115 grain. Not match ammo, rather soft ammo, but it's what we've got and it's regular ball ammo. The main purpose of these shots is for us to gather our concluding thoughts. We also like to see accuracy, but it's practical because we're not shooting from a bench. Tia throwing the fourth shot is my move. Was it the fourth? It was the fourth one, but that is a damn nice group. Yeah, I I could shoot this gun all day. All right, five shots from seven yards with that new Republic 115 green. Tia set the stage for me. That is a one inch square. And I use it because typically at seven yards, it's the same size as the front side post. It appears to be a little bit smaller than the front side post on this gun. Which is kind of easier because I just, if I can't see the black square, it must be on target, right? You know, going second gives you a real advantage. <laughs> <laughs> As Graham mentioned, we have been asked many times um, about Berettas and I, I had no idea what I was missing. Um, and I really enjoyed this shooting experience. The, um, let's just start out with the texture is great. It's not too aggressive. I appreciate the need for an aggressive texture, but I don't like it when they get too chunky. It, it feels like they're ripping into your hand. This has the same effect without being like that. It's multi-directional. Um, I love the memory points that it has. This take down lever. lever where my support hand sits on the gun, gun <laughs> rides right up against that. This was the only thing that was uncomfortable for me on this gun and it has to do with my hand shape, size, and fit on this gun. The trigger is perfect for defensive. I love the way I love that the sights came the way they did on the gun stock. Um, I appreciate not having to change my sights to have this as a carry option. Um, as with any gun, it is important to have knowledge of how to field strip your gun and things like that. And that's super important with this gun because in order to change the back strap, to make it comfortable for you, you have to know those things, which is great. If you are unfamiliar with your gun and unable to do it, teach you how to do those things because you're going to need to know how to do it in order to customize this gun for your hand. Graham and I did that prior to shooting it. I didn't look to see what backstrap is. This the large this one? This is the large. This one had a little bit more of a tang here, which helped fill that space for me. I can sometimes have a hard time getting up high enough like you're supposed to when you shoot. Um, I appreciate that it is also got interchangeable mag release. You can reverse that and make it left or right. And that it is in a position that is similar to uh, 
the paddle mag type release it's just right there i'm not having to change my grip to change a mag so well 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 done beretta thank you for the opportunity and enjoy i've had mixed feelings about this gun ever since i fought my way through the childproof box <laughs> <laughs> Which I, uh, in turn, had no problem figuring out. You just have to pay attention. Well, you have to read it. Um, <laughs> but um, there are some ownership things that I think are more complicated than other guns. Um, the field strip is a little bit funky. The manual description didn't match what ended up working. Um, Changing the back straps is more complicated than other guns, requires a tool, which other guns either don't require or include the tool. That said, any tool will do. A ballpoint pen is the example given in the manual, and you can do it with a ballpoint pen. Once you get past that, and you're actually using it, it's a really pleasant gun to shoot. This is a 3.7 inch barrel. It's the same length as the SIG 365 XL but it's a compact frame like your standard Glock 19, your, your 15 round basic nine mil. And I thought that was gonna lead to more snap, but it doesn't. In the tabletop, I noticed that the slide felt really heavy. And I also noticed that we've got a three tier spring, almost like the expensive DPM systems that I've bought to upgrade other guns came factory in this. And that combo makes this shoot very nicely. And to Tia's point on the texture, it grips you, but it doesn't rip you. <laughs> so it, it locks in hand. It's just overall a very nice experience. I think to parallel this European pistol would be to parallel it to a European car. There's a little more upkeep. You gotta pay attention to things a little more. It's not idiot proof to own, but man, when you're on the road, it's so worth it. It, it relates for me back to, like, I appreciate that there's a little bit more effort in field strip and things like that. That tells me it's put together a little bit better. If I could take that together or apart in, you know, the two fail sweeps that it does, that it takes to take it other largely marketed gun on the market, several of them, um, I don't always feel that those guns are going to have the longevity of something that this field yeah the the part that i have yet to unlock as of the date of filming this is to pull the chassis out of this these are a chassis gun like the 320 the 365 the arex delta uh, how that's done did not appear to be as simple as i had hoped <laughs> but that's another one of those like ownership got to learn a little more got to do a little more which is something i'm not afraid of it just means i got to put some effort in uh, why would you want to if it functions now having it on the range and we're pleased with it what would you only for modularity to change grip modules but okay. i really like this grip module um, so maybe it's not necessary at all i think that was probably a feature built in for competition in military contracts uh where stuff gets chewed up. Uh, you know, soldiers break things and eat things. Okay, uh, that makes sense. But uh, yeah, as a regular consumer, I don't think it's necessary on this. I did notice that I can flex this polymer if I really, really squeeze. Now I have large hands, fairly strong hands. I'm not saying that is a problem of the gun. I'm saying that might be part of what makes it so pleasant to shoot is I think there's a rubberization, if you will, that is helping to absorb some of the shock and some of the recoil because as the gun actions, some of that is you know, being distributed throughout the grip instead of jamming into your hand. That might be part of it. But um, initially I said thank you to the viewers who demanded one of these over and over for so long because uh, it's part of how we got our hands on it and learned to pay attention to it. Because just like Tia, I had kind of ignored the existence of these. I wasn't too impressed. But now I want to thank you again because this was a really pleasant shooting experience. This is a really enjoyable gun and it makes me just itch to try one with a longer slide or a bigger grip. Because if it can be comfortable as a compact with a subcompact slide, a full size or something with like a four and a quarter or four and a half 
has got to be just a dream to shoot. I'm not often taken back as much as I am by this. This, this is a pretty impressive gun. Thanks for watching. So, that's a terrible way to start a video. Can you start over? <laughs>